In this video, we will show you how to use standard embedded software debuggers alongside Virtualizer Studio's powerful hardware visibility features to perform effective source code level debugging of a Linux driver. We have Linux booted to the prompt on our ARMv8 based virtual prototype. To see how we got to this point, you can take a look at the previous video in this series. Now we can take a detailed look at the driver code handling the PL011 UART connected to the terminal window in our simulation. The driver's operation is usually invoked by interrupt activity from the UART device. So we will set a breakpoint in the driver's interrupt routine and see what happens when we generate an interrupt. We will pause the simulation and search for the interrupt routine in the disassembly window. When we have located it, we can set a breakpoint. Having set our breakpoint, we can resume the simulation and generate an interrupt by typing the character A in the terminal window. Our breakpoint is hit and the simulation pauses at this point. Before starting our software debug session, we can use Virtualizer Studio's hardware visibility features to examine the UART zero's signals. This shows that the UART INTR signal is asserted and we can check its connectivity in our design by looking at the spec flow tab in the VDK creation perspective. In the interrupt table, we can see that the UART INTR signal is connected to interrupt line 5. Now we can connect our debugger and examine the interrupt service routine. Virtualizer Studio features a fully integrated GDB debugger, which can be invoked directly from the design browser. We can select the desired CPU cluster and connect GDB from the context sensitive menu. The debug perspective opens and shows both VDK debug and GDB connected to and pausing the simulation. Since we want to use GDB to control the simulation, we allow VDK debug to run. Now GDB has full control as shown in the status bar. GDB has connected to all four CPUs in the cluster. However, in this case, the routine we want to examine is running on CPU 0. If we open thread 1, we can see a stack trace showing the routines that were executed before the PL011 interrupt routine is invoked. The source code for that routine is also shown. Now using the GDB debugger controls, we can step into the PL011 interrupt routine. We can see that the routine has an IRQ parameter and we can check the value of this in the variable window. This indicates the interrupt line that was raised to invoke the routine. As the first 32 interrupt lines are reserved for the CPU subsystem, the value of 37 corresponds to line 5, which matches the value for the UART INTR signal which we saw in the interrupt table. Using the debugger controls, we can continue to step through the code at the source level. As we do this, we see that one of the routine's first actions is to read the UART's MIS register and place the result in the status variable. We can use Virtualizer Studio to check the value of this register before executing the code. Virtualizer Studio allows you to see all the relevant views in the same interface. In the design browser, we can check the value of the UART MIS register and see that it's 4.0 hex. If we now step the code, we can see that the status variable is updated to 4.0 hex as expected. If we continue to step through the code, we see the routine access the UART ICR register. Writes to this register clear the interrupt status, and we will see the effect of this later. As we step further through the code, we see the PL11 RX charge routine is invoked. It's this routine which will carry out the actual work of servicing the interrupt and reading the character we typed into the terminal window. Now we can use the debugger to step into this routine and see what it does. When we do this, we see that it immediately calls another routine. Let's step into that one too. The routine we are in now extracts the character we typed in the terminal from the UART FIFO and we can step through the code until we reach the line which does this, placing the character 
in the CH variable. If we step past this line, we can see that the CH variable is updated to 61 hex, which is equivalent to the ASCII character A, which we typed into the terminal window. Having checked the character read operation, we can now use the debugger controls to return to the original UART service routine. We return to this routine just after the point at which we stepped into the called routines. If we continue to step through this routine, we see that the UART MIS register is read once again to determine if there is any more work to do. Again, we can check its value in the design browser, and now we see that it's zero. This is the effect of the write to the UART ICR register that we saw earlier. If we step over this line of code, we see that the status variable is now set to zero. There's no more work for this interrupt routine to do, and so it returns. This brings us to the end of this video.